Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the morning service and welcome online. <clears throat> we start with a prayer. Dear God, we thank you for this new day. We thank you that we can wake up so early, that we can see the sunrise, that we can come to your house to hear your word. And I pray that you would open our hearts today, that we yeah, we can hear your word, that we can hear what you want to say to us today. In the name of Jesus. Amen. You can open your Bibles in Hebrews chapter 11. It's the chapter that's talking about faith. And it says, it's um, written great examples of faith. And the first verse says, Faith shows the reality of what we hope for. It is the evidence of things we cannot see. And then it talks about faith, what faith is. And in this chapter at the end, um, we read uh, many examples of heroes of faith. Uh, many people like Moses, Abraham or Noah, who did great things that we can read in the Bible, who, who had a very great faith from God. And um, they overcame hard circumstances or resistance. And then the next chapter, Hebrews chapter 12, starts with the word therefore. So therefore means it's important to read what was before. We read about the examples of faith. And then it says, Hebrews 12 verse 1, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up. And let us, and let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. So, therefore, because we read, because we know so many examples of, of great faith, that's why, and then it says, we are surrounded by a huge crowd of witnesses. So, there is... Like in another translation, it says it's a cloud of witnesses of, of people of faith that lived maybe many years before and are long death, but there is a cloud of witnesses. And that's why we should, and it says, we should strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin. Not every weight is sin, maybe, but the weight and the sin that slows us down, it, it uh, tries to keep us from becoming also heroes of faith. But that's what, what God wants you to become. He wants you to become a hero of faith like these people we read in the chapter before. But if we, if we live in, in sin, if we take weights of the world, it slows us down. Um, it trips us up, the Bible says. And with, with the sin, we cannot run the race set before us. It says, let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. We need endurance. It's not by my strength that I can run this race. I need the endurance of God. And if I think about a race, when I run a race, I, I set my eyes on my target. And we, we read in the next verse that compared to the race of life, the race of, of faith, uh, my eyes should be set on Jesus. In verse 2 it says, We do this, this race, running this race, by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. Like, we set our eyes on Jesus. He is the goal. He is the target we run to. He is the champion. And in another translation it says, He is the originator and the perfecter of our faith. So, originator, like... Our faith started with Jesus, because of Jesus. Without Jesus, we, we could not have any faith. And he is the perfecter. Um, it's the, he's the one who perfects our faith. And then it says in the next sentence, Because of the joy awaiting him, he endured the cross, disregarding its shame. Now he is seated in the place of honor beside God's throne. Because of the joy awaiting him. What was this joy? When Jesus was on the cross, when he was suffering, he had his eyes on his goal. 
And his goal was you and me. He was, it was the, re the relationship he could have with us. And that's the great joy. And that was so important for him that he could endure this suffering, that he could run his race to, to save the world. And um, this relationship we can have today with him, it's only possible because he was victorious on the cross. So praise be to Jesus who, who did this, who uh, ran his race. And now he is seated in the place of honor besides God's throne. So when we talk about great examples of faith, Jesus is the, is the greatest. He is the one that had faith like nobody else. And he is my example for his trust in God, for his dedication, for his faithfulness, for his prayer. All his life is, should be my example. And he fulfilled his calling. His calling was unique. His calling was to save the world, to be the savior. That's, nobody has this calling again. It was the calling of Jesus and he fulfilled it perfectly. Um, it's, I should not have him as an example to, like, to become a savior too, but him in his life, he is my example. And as we look in, in the lives of other people, like we read in Hebrews 11, they can be my examples too. We read in the verses, like Hebrew 11, verses 32 to 35, before we, we read about a lot of people, and then it says, How much more do I need to say? It would take too long to recount the stories of the faith of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, David, Samuel, and all the prophets. By faith, these people overthrew kingdoms, ruled with justice, and received what God has promised them. They shut the mouths of lions, quenched the flames of fire, and escaped death by the edge of the sword. Their weakness was turned to strength. They become, became strong in battle, and put whole armies to flight. Women received their loved ones back again from death until then. Wow, that's great things, what, what people did by faith. And all these people and people who are not in the Bible, maybe they lived 10 years before, can be our examples. Uh, it's the, the question is, what is your target? What is your calling maybe? Search for examples that are good for you. The world offers us many examples that they, they, they shine maybe uh, on the outward, but we should um, pay attention that we um, choose our examples very wisely. We should choose examples like, like Jesus or like the, the people we, we read in the Bible or maybe... maybe um, evangelists from, from this century, um, we can hear or listen to their, um, their testimonies to see what had they, they had um, uh, circumstances, they had um, resistance, how did they uh, cope with it. They are not perfect, like nobody, but Jesus is perfect, but we can learn a lot. And um, in other words, in Revelation, Chapter 19, verse 10. At the end, it says, For the essence of prophecy is to give a clear witness for Jesus. So when we witness of what Jesus did, it is the spirit of prophecy. That means if I give a testimony of what Jesus did in my life, it can give you faith that he can do it in your life too. And as we read the examples of the, the great heroes of faith, it builds my faith that what Jesus did then, he can do today. He can do it again. And um, we should give testimonies. We should read or listen to testimonies of people who run their race with God. Um, for example, my, my hero of faith or my, my example is my mother. She's a mother of five children. And um, I, or we as children, we had a, a beautiful, wonderful childhood. And I, sometimes now I have one baby <laughs> and I can't imagine how, how she did it with five little children by her own because my dad was working the most of the time. And um, I know she's not perfect, 
But for me, as a mother, she is a great example. I don't know if I will have five children, but I can look to her and I can talk to her. And she is so wise. And as we see now, all of our like all of our siblings, we we walk with God. We um, yeah, we we stand in faith and and serve God. And I think it's it's a lot because my mother was there for us as we were little and as my parents like my father um too they um they raised us in in the um in the word like to to believe in Jesus so choose your examples wisely pick it out see look at their lives take examples here in church like the pastors or um other leaders Look how they live. Look, ask them how they um, deal with circumstances that are hard and l l um, be encouraged. Because as we go back to Hebrews 12, in verse 3, it says, Think of all the hostility he, end he endured from sinful people. Then you won't become weary and give up. Maybe you feel weary. Maybe you, you feel like giving up or you have felt that before. Look at Jesus. He didn't give up. He, he did not become tired or weary. We all need encouragement at times. We all need this to, to um, be encouraged and to, that someone says, go on, you can do it. Or that I can look at lives of others and see, okay, they did it, I can do it too, because Jesus is on my side. And on the other hand, we... Um, We can think about, am I an example? Are you an example? What do your children, your pupils, your employees, maybe, what do they learn from you? Are you an example of faith? Will you be called a hero of faith when you're dead? I don't know <laughs> uh, what, what they will call me when I'm dead, but that should be our goal. That should be our um, target to say, okay, I want to become a hero of faith. And um, I want to have a big, a great faith that Jesus gives us. And we only can do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, by learning from him, seeing what he did, how he lived, and um, to be led by him. Amen? Amen. Amen. Thank you, God, for your word. Thank you, Jesus, that you fulfilled your calling perfectly. Thank you that you took this Yeah, you ran this race, you, you, were, you were victorious on the cross, and I thank you, God, that you did this, that you endured the suffering, that you made the way open for us, that we can come to you, that we can be your children now. And I pray that we, in our little life, in our little faith, that we run this race, yeah, that you can be proud of us, that you can... Look to us and say, it, we are good servants. And I pray, God, that you would guide us, that you would lead us. We don't want to um, lose hope. We don't want to be weary or give up. We want to keep our eyes on, on you, Jesus. And I pray that you would help us today, that we keep our eyes on you, that we be led by you through your spirit in the name of Jesus. Amen.